Well, Representative Kassar, thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. Um, enjoyed watching uh, Texas USA and seeing all about your campaign. Um, I, ha I haven't even seen it yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing it tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So um, first off, talk a little bit about your campaign in 2022, and you're the first Hispanic person to be elected uh, from the, uh, the Austin area to Congress. Um, what did that mean for you? And, and tell us, a, give us a little flavor for your campaign. It was a really fast and quick campaign. I uh, was committed to being an Austin City Council member, uh, had been working to make sure that people's uh, homes weren't lost during the pandemic, make sure that people were able to survive that time of sickness and difficulty for so many people was working on that recovery. And then because we hit a new census every decade, there is the creation of a, a new congressional seat and had to just decide um, what to do. And it really felt like the right moment to talk about the really big issues facing people across the country, but especially in Texas, where uh, abortion was starting to become outlawed when we kicked off the campaign and then fully was outlawed uh, right in the middle of the campaign uh, at a time where we had gone through this terrible winter storm and we we're about to be headed into a heat wave where the climate crisis was hitting us worse and worse. And we really needed to talk about the big, bold ideas that were actually going to solve Texans' everyday problems. And so for me, uh, the campaign was really about those big issues. And the fact that even as a progressive, there are a, a gro there's a growing, growing number of people in Texas that believe in coming together and using democracy to care for one another rather than distorting the democratic process and utilizing it to blame each other um, or to hurt the vulnerable. Yeah, and it, it's really the thing that comes across in the documentary because they profile you, um, Lena Hidalgo and Beto O'Rourke, and you know you win convincingly. Judge Hidalgo wins in a narrow election, and Beto is basically blown out. Um, so, what is what do you take away from that very mixed result? Um, of you know, certain certain people are, are 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 able to succeed in Texas on the progressive side, but others on a statewide level maybe are not anywhere close. The, to me, the, the lesson from the election cycle is that Texas is trending in the progressive direction and it's heading that way, at clo getting that way closer and closer every single time. And the enormous sacrifices made by folks like former Congressman O'Rourke and the sacrifice that he made over multiple cycles, he and his entire family have really helped continue trending Texas in the right direction. Because you can win or lose elections, but you don't win and lose organizing. That organizing can't go away. And more and more young people, uh, especially uh, some of the young people that I talked to on the campaign trail who basically only know the Trump era is basically all they've known of politics, could see what the alternative was, see that there are people who are actually out there trying to work on common sense solutions. And I think that's so very important. And we know that the right wing's top priority in Texas was to get rid of Judge Lena Hidalgo, and they weren't able to do it. Uh, and I think that that's so important. We saw Georgia flip from being Republican to Democratic in 2018. Well, Harris County is, has the population of Georgia, uh, and it also flipped that year in 2018. And when the Republicans came and tried to undo that this last election cycle, she held strong. Uh, and Congressman O'Rourke in his original run against Ted Cruz, and then this run for governor, continues to close those margins. And to me, um, it reminds me of something that I actually recently got to do as a member of, of Congress. Um, I got to go uh, and walk uh, across the Edmund Pettus Bridge um, uh, around, and you know, it, it's, it's been about 60 years since the first march across that bridge. Uh, and uh, I talked about how it was so important and, uh, to be able to go and memorialize the anniversary so many decades later um, of walking across that bridge. But uh, some of the women that I was crossing the bridge with who were at the original um, uh, protest in the 60s said, no, this isn't a comm commemoration. It's just the 30th or 40th or 50th time um, that we've had to do this on our march towards justice. And so this isn't uh, these campaigns 
uh, sometimes can be seen like they're just won and lost in a sh few short months, but really they're part of a longer part of history. And uh, I think that when we look back in history, we'll look at people like Beto O'Rourke's campaigns and recognize that without his campaign, we never would have achieved the change that we've been able to achieve. Yeah. And it's interesting because in Texas, maybe it's like a metaphor for the whole country, because a lot of the things that Trump did were kind of done in Texas years before. Right. And, you know, you've sort of seen the results of that with the abortion, um, the abortion laws that have come into effect, the uh, anti-trans, uh, anti-LGBT laws that have come into effect in Texas. You know, what, what do you think is the best way for people on your side and the progressive side to to fight against such an entrenched uh, power structure in Texas? So goes Texas, so goes the nation. And for too long, Texas has led the nation in uh, having greater and greater inequality, greater and greater oligarchy, greater and greater authoritarianism, greater and greater environmental destruction. And we've got to turn things the opposite way for Texas's sake, but for the entire country too. And I think the path towards a Texas that isn't just a blue Texas, but actually just a Texas that believes in democracy and believes in caring for one another is for more everyday folks to be inspired and get the chance to be involved. Because we aren't a red state or a blue state, we're an underorganized state. And we need to inspire the vast majority of people who don't really participate in politics to recognize that their voice is so needed. We usually rank at the very bottom of the 50 states in voter turnout. And I think that folks like Beto O'Rourke and Lina Hidalgo are so critical to making sure that everyday folks see that there are options, that there are people who really want to listen to them and care about them. And I think that that's what's going to change the state and therefore the country. I think I have to go vote here in a minute. And so I don't know if you've got a last question. Okay. I was just going to ask you, last weekend was a big uh, acquittal of Ken Paxton. What, is, what does that say about the state of politics in Texas? I wasn't surprised. And I think most people shouldn't be surprised to see Texas Republicans uh, letting somebody off for such blatant corruption. Politicians aren't going to save us from this challenge. It's up to everyday people and voters to organize and demand better. Uh, and I think that that's the message that we're going to carry out while in office. My job as a U.S. congressman isn't to stay a U.S. congressman. My job should be to try to deliver policies for people and to try to show people that there is a different path than the one we're on, a path where folks are more equal, a path where people have health care and housing as a human right, a path towards a, a kinder and more reasonable state. Because in our past, Texas used to lead on progressive issues. It was President Johnson from Texas that signed the Voting Rights Act and signed the Civil Rights Act and turned Medicare uh, into law and created Head Start. It was Sarah Weddington was the 20 something year old lawyer who won the Roe v. Wade case in the first place from Texas. And so we need to get back to that kind of place that we have to present people that opportunity. All right, man, we really appreciate you. Okay, thank you so much. Thanks for watching the You Interview channel. With over 3,000 original celebrity videos, we have one of the largest collections of celebrity interviews anywhere. So remember to like and comment on our videos and subscribe to the channel. If you want to get more involved, you can become a member of the channel. Membership has its perks. You can see exclusive celebrity videos and get the opportunity to ask our celebrity guests questions. We can't wait to hear from you.